my life? Well, my friend, I have the answer. Bible Way Hibner Memorial Church of God in Christ presents Chain Breakers this and every Sunday at 9 a.m. here on WHYL. From the L.B. Smith Ford Lincoln Studios, Oldies 102.9 is WHYL Carlisle. It's time now for the Real Estate Radio Guy with real estate broker John Rainville. For the next hour, you'll learn everything about national real estate topics, trends, and news revolving around Central PA. It's sponsored by GSF Mortgage Corporation, EnviroQuest Inspections, and SearchHomesInPA.com. And now, here's the Real Estate Radio Guy, John Rainville. Good morning. Hey, it's a gorgeous day in uh, Pennsylvania today. Um, Good morning, Kingsley. How are you doing, buddy? Never felt better, John. How are you? <laughs> you don't sound so good. Were you, <clears throat> so you were screaming at the uh, rave last night? What were you doing? I wouldn't call it a rave, but there was actually, I'll give a shout out to a, a pretty decent band last, all, uh, last night called uh, Swift Kick. Okay. Um, did a little bit of everything from Fleetwood Mac to New Rock, Current Rock. Pop, the whole nine yards. They had a great setup, nice set, nice band, great vocals, um, very cute lead, lead singer. So if you get a chance to uh, see them or wherever you are in your travels, definitely worth the show. So I understand you're going to be uh, in Vegas in August for what, four days? Be out there for a week. We're going for, out For a week? Yeah, going out Wednesday, August 9th through uh, the 15th. Uh, our team, quick and easy. Quick shout out to our team. Um, went through the regional event. Um, fought. This is for billiards, by the way. Um, in nine and ball. This is for the VFW. We play for the VFW. Yep, they're our sponsor. Okay. And uh, so we're being sponsored to go out to Vegas in August to compete uh, nationally against uh, the rest of the top teams that qualified regionally. Okay, so it's not just VFWs. It, it it's, it's oh no no no. It, it's, it's much bigger than that yeah this is the whole national deal i I don't even i think they're starting to call it world i don't know if they're going to be teams from china there or japan all right so we got to make sure you've got a real estate radio guy's hat on for when while you're out there in case you get some tv well because they're all going to know who i am once i get out there that's right they will they'll be looking for you they will be yeah i'm gonna have you know tv people coming up to me wanting to interview me (laughs) it's gonna be crazy i don't know how to handle it yet well, we've got an interesting show today. Um, we're going to be talking uh, again with Jesse Storm, who was on our, I don't, know if you, I don't know if you remember, but for our uh, Christmas Eve show, which has been one of our popular ones that people replay all the time. Uh, Jesse's going to be coming on here in a little bit, and we're going to be talking about property management. Jesse does a lot of property management, and actually throughout a lot of the areas of Pennsylvania, not just central Pennsylvania. And that's, uh, and that's a, a great topic to talk about, since... You and I are going to talk a little bit about um, responsibilities of a landlord. Yep. And uh, I think on the back end, responsibilities on how to get a crap tenant out of your apartment as a landlord. Jesse's pretty good at that. And it's, it's just like, you know, I have to say, the guy guy helped me out. I've got a few rental units, and, uh, you know, he had his uh, guys go out yesterday. We needed a step repair. And, I mean, wow, within, you know... No time. We had we had a you know good estimate. Guy got on the phone with me, told me exactly what he was going to do, and uh, it's it's lined up for next week. And you know what? I didn't have to do anything. Jesse took care of everything. That is what happens when you have a good property management company. Yeah, I just I only had to approve it. You know, my partner approved everything right away and. Seamless, seamless. But uh, so now this isn't the type of property management company that maybe has like Bob and Luigi, you know, go collect the rent, you know, big ballers and three hundred pound guys that are all muscle that knock on the door and hey, oh, you must pay rent today. No, I think they're down around two seventy five. They've been on Weight Watchers. All right, all right. The, the guys are doing good. <laughs> um, another, and then we're going to have uh, you know our favorite home inspector, uh, John Stas, on lately. And John has a really timely topic today. He's going to be talking about air conditioner maintenance because you know with this hot, steamy, balmy weather we've been having here, like we're in the tropics, um, now's the time when you need to know those things. You know how to how to uh, take care of uh, your air conditioning system. Um, so 
that's another topic today. I'm going to stump you today. Oh, you're going to stump me yes. today. Yes, okay, I okay. am going to have Staz okay. just put his phone up in the air. Okay. And I will be able to pick out where he is just from listening, sounds around him. Just from, from sounds. Okay, so we're going to know right where Waldo is. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, you know, I want to talk, you know, real quick here before uh, Jesse uh, gets here, uh, you know, about, you know, the uh, market again, you know, and, and rates, you know, let's talk a little bit about rates here. I mean, the rates are still, we're, we're you know, flat. It's still, flat. Yeah, it's still, flat. Still decent. No, no real flat. changes. I mean, just like I said, up and down roller coaster, but it's, it's such a, like a, a minimum effect roller coaster that the rates have really not have gone anywhere in the last a really month, if you think about it. Now, you know, I've been, I've been telling everybody every week that we're, you know, severely short on inventory, which is which is true. We're still low on inventory. Homes are still flying off the market. Um, but I have to say that, you know, lately we've seen listing appointments to go and talk to people have definitely picked up now. Which is good. Which is Which is excellent. Now, some of those have been with... Uh, consumers who currently have their property on the market and have not been able to get it sold, you know, and they're having you know, us come in to do a second opinion, you know, and maybe they're looking to change here because triple witching hour again in the real estate market, a lot of people list things for, you know, six months. If they listed it in January, you know, right here at the end of the month, they're looking to, you know, make a change just like they do around Christmas time right there at the end of the year. Uh, but we've seen a lot of them out there, you know, that are looking to put their homes in the market really over the course of the next month, which is a little bit late in the season. We've had a lot of people like that as well. And, and um, it, it's funny that we, you bring this up because Pennsylvania's always been a little late to the game as far as, you know, pushing the market. Right. Los Angeles is, and as you know, I lived out in L.A. for, what, eight years you know, prior to 07, before I moved back, you know, it was at the height of <clears throat> market prices. Okay. They're almost close to the same levels they were in 07 in Los wow. Angeles now. And then you look at the Pennsylvania market where we're in, and Pennsylvania, you know, we didn't obviously have that 30 40% climb in a month like Los Angeles did, um, but we really haven't had that much movement up until recent, and that is because of the lack of inventory. So hopefully uh, we don't foresee any sort of crash coming or uh, market adjustment based on those numbers. Yeah, I don't think there's a, I don't think there's a feel that there's a bubble here, not, not at least here in Pennsylvania. I mean, I know some of the markets, they are starting to uh, look at that. I know the Canadian market, there, there's some fear up in the Canadian market and some different things. But uh, I think locally, I think we're still pretty good, you know. Steady. Yeah, definitely, steady. definitely steady. Um, so yeah, so um, we're talking about landlord, and you know the the whole precedent behind a landlord or the whole uh, what's the word I'm looking for here um, tagline of the landlord is to is to create uh, safe housing for a tenant, right? I mean that's right. the whole end of the end of the. A day that's that's what our goal is aside from you know landlords making money but unfortunately there's a lot that goes into it and you know there's nine steps or nine things that I think a landlord is, is really responsible for and you know we always hear about you know laws and rights of of the tenant and and how to I don't want to say screw your landlord over but at the end of the day that's kind of how the system's set up um, so there's a lot of things that as a landlord you have to, to look at aside from what your responsibilities are. Uh, and, and the one thing, you know, like they say is safety. So, you know, one thing we got to do is, is make sure that any safety hazards uh, are repaired, any health issues are rectified. Okay. Um, and that can be what railings, windows, broken windows, broken doors, uh, a secure facility, 
um, you know, one of the things that a landlord is responsible for, uh, which is all, you know, also part of upkeep of a property, keeping the property clean, you know, having it ready for a tenant when you have a lease ready to go um, and a tenant ready to move in that signed a contract. You know, another big thing is plumbing, making sure the plumbing works, making sure the heat works. If you have air conditioning, obviously, the, you know, the air systems, making sure all that works. Um, making sure a tenant understands the lease that they're signing. So go over the lease. Uh, make sure they understand what they're signing. Go over it section by section so they understand their responsibilities and, of course, what your responsibilities are as a landlord. And, and on both ends, you know, th- there's actually a ton, although, you know, the big one is, is pay your rent on time. Well, you know, that's the name of the show here today. You pay, you stay, you don't, you won't. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, it's, it's, you know, if you pay, things are great. It's heaven. I mean, look at all the stuff that we have to go through as a landlord to make sure the property is, is the Taj Mahal for our tenants. You know, in essence, depending on where you're at, you're supposed to be able to create a safe environment. Now, how you do that in certain areas, I don't know. Um, I guess it's just depends on where you're at. All right. Well, I know Jesse Storm uh, is on the line here. We're going to be talking with Jesse in just a second. You know, Jesse's going to be talking to us about property management. I mean, he's definitely an expert on that. And he's also then going to um, talk about a way that he's giving back to the community that we're going to participate in. Uh, and uh, I'm going to let Jesse tell us about that. So, hey, good morning, Jesse. Are you there? Good morning. Yes, I'm here. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, we thought we'd start off this morning with talking a little bit about um, property management. If you could sort of guide us through what all you take care of. And then, you know, later on, then, you know, tell everybody, you know, what you're doing is a way, your way of giving back to the community, which I think is huge. Well, property management's a uh, interesting thing to talk about because you have landlords who want someone to handle everything from uh, finding a property for them and basically them just getting mailbox money hands off. So in those cases, we, we step in, we'll find and identify a viable property that will make them money long term, um, and then we handle everything from the start to finish with uh, you know fixing the property, cleaning the property up, fixing the property, and renting the property, and then long-term management of the property. Um, we de- definitely identify areas that will bring homeowners or landlords um, a better return on their dollar. I mean, some areas, uh, like when you're talking about Lancaster City or Lancaster County, house prices are very expensive. So, you know, you buy a home there and rent it out for $1,200 a month, which is the average rent in Lancaster, and until you pay your taxes, uh, you know, you wind up with five to $7,000 of income, and if you've got a mortgage on it, you're really not seeing a return on your investment other than paying down that mortgage for many, many years. So if you get a bad tenant in there, um, you know, they could destroy the home and cost the uh, owner a lot of money. So identifying good candidates for the home, doing a, an eviction check, doing a criminal background check, and then credit check uh, are vital to putting proper tenants in. But then we also identify other areas that are more lucrative uh, where you can buy a home uh, for a lot less money and have a lot less taxes. So for something that you might only be $25,000 into, the total till you bought it and, and repaired it, uh, you could still make uh, a good $7,000 return um, through the year on the property. So if you take that same $100,000 investment uh, for property owners and uh, invest it into a different area, you potentially could get four homes for the same money and have you know, $2,000 a month return in income, uh, which is a lot better than what you're seeing in some of the bigger areas, bigger neighborhoods, um, like Lancaster County, York County, or Harrisburg because of the tax rates. The taxes are so much lower in some other areas to, that are really more beneficial. Jesse, but, uh, Jesse, before we really talk a lot more about your turnkey investment program, can you sort of ex- 
give it to our listeners sort of on your property management because your property manage anything from what from one unit to a hundred units from a homeowners association correct correct so we we do property management for you know anyone just starting out who's just looking to buy their first investment property uh, all the way up to HOAs and condos to uh, manage the maintenance of the common areas and collect the money um, you know and, and our cost for doing it is generally a flat fee percentage and uh, we don't charge the, the uh, one month's rent to put a new tenant in um, you know our costs are very low because we do it on a larger scale and everything we do is technology based um, so HOAs and condo associations can uh, have, log into their portal and have a communication portal to where everybody can talk, but that's where they would also pay their HOA and condo fees at right on that portal. And if somebody notices an issue, they can make a uh, repair request right on online. They can even snap a picture of the issue and upload it to the system. So the, there's no question of what needs to be repaired or what needs to be done. Um, and that holds true for single rental units, multi-rental units. Um, so, I mean, we, we provide a, a, a wide array of services for the first-time investor all the way up through the HOAs and condos. Now, Jesse, that you were, you were uh, talking about different areas. So, you know, for example, if you're in downtown Lancaster, downtown York, for that matter, obviously you've got a different clientele, a different type of property, which... A lot of times they're older, need a lot more maintenance. Um, you know, these are properties that are, are still under just a flat percentage, regardless of the property that we're talking about. Correct. We don't we don't charge a move-in fee for moving a tenant in. So a lot of property management companies will charge one month's rent to put a tenant into it. Um, we we don't do that. Um, you know, we have a flat percentage fee. Uh, we don't charge to write eviction letters like a lot of companies do. We don't charge to go to court on, on the behalf of the landlord. Um, you know, it's just a flat fee uh, because we do it, we're do we doing this in a larger volume, uh, so we're able to provide a better pricing uh, for investors and more service. I mean, we, we own cars to drive around and do maintenance checks on the houses and and uh, when we're, we're in an area showing a tenant uh, one property, we're making use of that time by driving past the other homes and scheduling uh, walkthroughs. Uh, we do a spring and fall check so that way we can get into the home, put new air filters into the homes for the landlords, and uh, do a, a property check on the, on the homes and be inside and vis- visually put our, our eyes on what's going on with the property. So, Jesse, I know you've put in a state-of-the-art, I mean, probably the best system anyone could have for both tenants and landlords, because if I'm a landlord, I can check in 24-7, and I know everything that's going on. And same thing if I'm a tenant and I have something, you know, hey, maybe my toilet's starting to run and I want to let you guys know, I can just do that right online too, correct? Oh, yeah. I mean, what, what uh, a lot of people don't realize is my background was computer programming, so pretty, uh, uh, you know, innovative in bringing the best technology forwards for not only tenants but uh, property managers. So one of the, one of the uh, big things that landlords always have, have always heard a complaint with, um, you know, is that they go to buy a new home and the bank wants a profit and loss statement or a copy of the rent roll for their property. And usually the bank's calling them at 5 o'clock, wanting that the day before settlement. And then they're calling their property management company and they're saying, well, you know, give us a week or two and we can put something together for you. Ours is all online. The property owner can log in at any point in time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, pull up their rent roll, pull up their own P&I uh, you know, our profit and loss statement, P&L statement on it, uh, P&L statement, and uh, print it out and have it right then and there at, at a moment's notice at any point in time. They can log in, see what tenants of theirs have paid, what tenants haven't paid. Uh, the other great thing is, is, you know, we generally charge tenants for all utilities. So, you know, if a, if a landlord has a utility bill that comes to their house in their name for some strange reason, 
they can scan it to us. We upload it through the online portal, add it to the tenant's bill so that the tenant can see their own utility bill, even though it came to the landlord or landlord's name. Um, we can get it up there where it needs to be so the tenant has a copy of it and it's a direct bill. Uh, just like repairs, I mean, that's another big issue that I've seen a lot with property management companies where, you know, tenant identifies that, the, that as you said, the toilet's leaking or the toilet continuously runs. And the property management company sends someone out at 60 bucks an hour or $100 an hour or whatever that price may be to do that repair, and the bill comes back at $150, where they add 20% to it and then bill the landlord for it. We're not adding 10%. We're not adding 20%. We're not adding anything to it. It's a direct bill for what that repair costs is what the, what the uh, landlord physically pays uh, for the repair. Because our idea behind this is, you know, that if we keep our costs as low as possible, you're going to reinvest and buy more investment properties for you to make more money. In turn, we're going to make more money on that flat fee uh, percentage every month by doing more units for that owner. So uh, real quick then, I mean, you know, when you sit there and you interview different property management companies, all of these questions come up. Like, do you handle uh, preparation of the property before a tenant gets in? You know, the cleaning, making sure the, it's inspected, everything works, the screening of the tenants. So far, it sounds like you pretty much handle everything from front to back to collecting checks to everything. So... Uh, yeah, he doesn't collect what? checks. No checks in the mail. He'll t- t- ask him how he collects. Oh, them. oh, please! This this kind of just puts the icing on the cake. <laughs> how do you collect your rents? Well, ninety percent of everyone pays directly online by an arch payment from their checking account or by credit card uh, through our online system. Now, we do collect some checks. There are some people who, you know, send us money orders directly to the office and we put them up in there. Uh, but our company policy is, is if we don't receive the payment by check by the first of the month, your only option to avoid late payments during your five-day grace period is to make the payment electronically online. In which case, they might as well do it first to begin with. Right. Correct. Jesse, um, I, just a side side question here. <clears throat> Do you also offer these services for commercial um, commercial building owners? Maybe they own a s- small strip center. Do you offer the same services? We don't have anything in our portfolio currently for commercial, but our systems would work, and I would be I, I would be more than happy to speak with somebody that would own a commercial complex that would like to. Uh, have a property management company run this, run the company for them or run the building for them. Um, but currently, we don't have any commercial properties in – and when I say commercial properties, I'm talking about restaurants, uh, shopping centers, that type of stuff. We do have, you know, multi-unit commercial buildings with, where they have multiple rental units, residential rental units in them. Uh, but nothing we – have, we have nothing in our profile currently for shopping centers and things like that. So it, it really sounds like all the headaches that a landlord goes through, um, you, you pretty much handle from, from the start, the onset. So what's Correct. the excuse? You know, and and what don't we, you handle? We, well, um, there's not much that we don't handle uh, because we do go to court for the landlords if, if there's an eviction and there's no charge for going to court for that. The only thing the landlord would pay for there would be the actual filing fee for the court costs to do the eviction or to go to court for something there. Um, outside of that, I mean, you know, everything's pretty much handled from start to finish. And, you know, you can, as landlord, you have the choice between having us do 100% or having a limited service. So when I say a limited service, uh, we have some landlords who want to do their own repairs. So the repair goes in, the landlord's put in as a vendor into our system. So if a repair comes in, it's immediately dispatched out to the landlord to do the repair. If the landlord responds back that they're unable to do it, it then steps down to our next vendor on the list to do that repair. 
So landlords do have options if they want to do some repairs on their own or do different things. I mean, we can we can tailor this system to anyone for any amount of service that they want. So <clears throat> if I'm a landlord and I'm out there thinking about doing property management, and obviously I've got Jesse Storm on the radar now, hopefully, because everybody's listening in. What uh, what sort of numbers do you give as far as vacancy rates? How do you handle vacancy rates? How do you handle the, the tenant screening? Do you have those sort of numbers that you publish and give out to uh, potential landlords? Well, I, I can tell you that our, our vacancy rate is well below 5%. Uh, and generally, that vacancy rate is because of new, new properties coming on board. So, uh, you know, that, that's what really drives up our vacancy rate is as, as we bring new properties on board. Property owner calls and says, hey, we've got, we're, we're getting ready to settle on a building with five units in and it's completely vacant. Uh, you know, it may take a month or so to get repairs done to the building, get things brought up to par uh, before we start putting tenants in. And, you know, it may take us another month or so to get all of the units full. So that that adds into our vacancy rate. Uh, but generally in Lancaster County, uh, Harrisburg, uh, Northumberland County, Philadelphia, um, up in Lewistown, uh, you know, in, in, in the areas that we work, we, we basically work about 100 air miles of Lancaster County. Um, we have lists of people who've already fill out applications and are already pre-qualified from the, the eviction reports, the, cre- the back criminal background checks and credit checks that are on our radar. I mean, uh, you know, I was just talking to my staff yesterday um, where we've got, we've got over 500 people just sitting there waiting in different areas for more properties to come on board in certain areas to put them into. One of the nice things, too, Jesse, is I think it's because of the scale of your operations <clears throat> where a sole, single landlord doesn't have this ability is you have so many units that, that you're managing and renting. So you can, if one unit doesn't fit a particular tenant, you may have three or four other ones locally that you can put them into. Correct, correct. I mean, we have people that... Uh, you know, do Section 8 that may be in, in uh, Steelton and they want to move into Harrisburg and they call us about a unit in Harrisburg and, uh, you know, their Section 8 vouchers taking too long to be transferred um, and they're concerned, they're, they're pre-qualified. Uh, it's just taking too long to get their voucher transferred to Harrisburg and we, we'll put them into another Steelton unit for a year and, and then find them another place in Harrisburg. Um, you know, we have tenants who are in a unit. It might be a two-bedroom unit. They have another baby. So, so they watch on our website. <laughs> they, they're watching our website when they're making their monthly payments every month uh, at other vacancies, and they'll give us a call and say, hey, uh, we just seen Holly Street in Harrisburg become available. Uh, can, we, can we switch over to that house? You know, we, we rerun their income profile to make sure that they can afford the more expensive three-bedroom or four-bedroom home that they're looking at. And if everything works, we will migrate them over to the other house. But what we also then do is we'll push that out 30, 45 days, so that way we can have a tenant lined up for their unit so that landlord on that unit doesn't have a vacancy window. So as one person's moving out, we're going to send in a cleaning crew, clean the house, and then have the next tenant moving in right away. So if, if you've got 500 tenants sitting on you know, the back end of this operation just waiting for a unit to get into, that kind of simplifies the whole screening slash trying to find a tenant issue in a lot of different areas. Well, not every house fits every person. Um, you know, you, you may have 20 people qualified in Harrisburg, but they don't want to live on Crescent Street. Uh, so you've got these people sitting there waiting for the next house to become available uh, in, in an area that, that they'll, they're willing to live in. Uh, you know, not all of our landlords buy high-end houses. I mean, some of them aren't the, uh, 
the Ritz Carlton. Uh, you know, we we work with everything from a, a low end rental to a very high end brand new townhouse that uh, an investor may buy, uh, and we have generally have tenants to fit all of those different uh, scenarios. Jesse, and that backlog, in essence, of tenants also helps you with your uh, turnkey investment program for investors where they're looking to buy properties. They can do that through you, and you'll take care of everything from from beginning to end, correct? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. I, I mean, you know, what we, what, what we do a lot of is, you know, uh, we'll identify landlords who are looking to reinvest into buying more units, and we'll partner them up with a real estate agent from brokersreality.com. And, uh, you know, that agent will take them out, identify a good property for them, negotiate a great deal for them. They buy the unit. Meanwhile, we know what's going on from the property management side. And, you know, so we've got 30 days or so to prepare to have a tenant ready. So we'll start marketing that rental unit as becoming available. Um, you know, and uh, there's been times where we've seen that the seller of the, of the building didn't want anybody marketing it for rent because they hadn't gone to settlement yet. We just push a couple of other our other houses that are already occupied live in the area, build up a couple of uh, uh, tenants, prospective tenants for that area, and, and when they call in, we tell them we got another house coming. You know that particular house is rented. We've got another one coming live uh, that would be uh, available in 30 days for them. Um, show them some pictures and prepare them to do a walkthrough in the house. So at that point, we may have, we may identify 10 or 15 folks that have interest in renting it. And then once the landlord actually goes to settlement with it, we'll go out, do any repairs, do any cleaning that needs to be done, and get it lined up for a tenant to be into right away. So how does, how does your company work as the turnkey investment company? In other words, you know, you've got Jesse Storm Realty, and uh, I'm a landlord, and I come to you, and I say, hey, you know, I've got an extra uh, $100,000 I'd like to invest in property. Do you sit down with me and say, you know, this is how I see it playing, or here's two options. We can go Route 1 and, and buy a Taj Mahal, or we can uh, go Route 2 and buy five, you know, lesser properties, and here's what I anticipate your return on your money to be. Oh, most definitely. I mean, so with the, with with property management, you got to also identify what the person's goal is uh, when they're investing that money. Do they want a long term hold that's just going to pay them, you know, a basic money every month, and they're never going to really have to worry about tenancy or anything like that. Uh, you know, and in those cases, we may take that hundred thousand dollars and go out and buy a fairly new townhouse. And you may have an eleven, twelve hundred dollar a month income um, with three thousand, four thousand dollars a year in taxes, and you're going to make five, six hundred bucks of profit every month off of that house. Um, and that may be a retirement package that somebody's working on putting together for themselves. You know, they're building up; they want some higher end, long term, no repair type of homes that you know they're going to hold for for their retirement type of thing. Uh, so we'll identify what their wants and needs are for their retirement plan. But then you're going to have some, some folks that come in that are in their 20s, 30s, 40s, who are just getting started in investment. They don't have a lot of money. They may have that $100,000, but they want to grow this thing to replace their current income so they can retire from where they're working at at a younger age and have a substantial income while retired early. So then what we'll do is we'll sit down and we'll identify homes in a low tax bracket area uh, that is a cheaper home that's going to be a long-term, more of a cash cow type of thing, so that way they can reinvest quicker. So we have some areas that we work into where that $100,000, we can go out and buy maybe uh, two homes that are ready to basically rent without with doing a little minor cleanup and maybe some new carpet to and buy them for uh, fifteen to eighteen thousand dollars and and put three to five thousand dollars into them ready for rent uh, and then buy two that need a little bit more repair work on that we could pick up for them for like ten thousand dollars and then buy one that's a total rehab. 
So then in that scenario, we'll get the first two fixed up, rent it, take a little bit of the money, fix, start working on the other two, using the rent money that's coming in then from the first two to pay to do the repairs on those second two, get them up and online for them. Now they've got four, they're making $2,000 a month off of, use that money then and a little, you know, a little of that extra cash that was left over from the purchase and rehab that one that was a total rehab that they bought for maybe two or three thousand dollars. Now they've got five units making them twenty five hundred dollars a month. So now, you know, in doing that, now every I want to say four to five months you could buy another unit and then rehab that unit. Now you move up to three thousand dollars. Now you're going out every three months and buying a home rehabbing it, and as you add to that scenario, you could really build that portfolio up. As we've done for some retirees, we had a, a client that came to us. Her uh, father was elderly, lived in his home for 50-some years. We wound up selling his house for $55,000. A little over a year ago, we invested that money into some lower-end units that make larger profits. We then created him to have, and over that past year, he's built up to have about 12 units um, where he was only making a thousand dollars a month from the federal government for his retirement uh, social security. He's now buffered that by an additional three thousand dollars a month, and then continues to use the extra money that he's making off the rentals to invest into buying more. So he has now a nest egg to give to his children when he does pass away. Very awesome. I mean, that, that's that's an awesome service. So, Jesse, what's the best number if we have an investor out there, one, an investor, or two, a landlord that is, you know, <laughs> is no longer wants to handle their properties? Where's the best number to reach you and your team? Uh, brokers Realty uh, Property Management can be reached at 717-917-1537. Do you have a website set up? Uh, the property management website is Brokers Realty PM, as in property management.com. Fabulous. So, Fabulous. Jesse, we want to talk a little bit about your huge thing that you're doing to give back to the community um, September 10th. Can you tell us a little bit about that, what you're, what you're doing? Yeah, fantastic. Uh, Brokers Realty and the Jesse Storm team have partnered up with the Lancaster Barnstormers. Um, for an event that's being dubbed as Never Forget. Uh, this is going to be launched on the weekend of September or September 10th uh, in remembrance of what happened September 11th. Uh, so we are giving away tickets through your radio show and uh, to new property management clients that come on board along with our current clients. We're giving out tickets for the Barnstormers game for the Never Forget event on September 10th. Uh, and, you know, the folks that are eligible to get the tickets through the radio show, uh, you know, are veterans and first responders, police and firefighters. I mean, we want to thank everybody for their hard work and, and keeping us safe, also keeping our tenants safe. So, Jesse, are we giving away a pair of tickets to, let's say, an EMT calls in today and would like to get a set of tickets are we going to give them a pair of tickets? No. Actually, what we want to give you is a four-pack for you to take your spouse and children along with you. That is just so nice. Awesome. What a, what a fantastic so, thing to do to give back to it, to our frontline people. Yep. So what, what we've dedicated to your radio show is 20 sets every Saturday until the event. That's fantastic. Well, you know, so if anyone here later in the show wants to call in 717-249-1787 or hit us up on our Facebook page, we'll put you in for some tickets. Please do. Yeah, that's awesome, Jesse. That really is awesome. And I think it'll, yep. be, it'll be a great event. Um, and, yeah, I mean, what, what a great day to do that and, and certainly the right type of people to give those tickets out to. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're going to be having, uh, you know, 
fire apparatus, uh, a bunch of equipment into the, the ball stadium uh, in the parking lot for the children to be a part of and learn about what their parents do and 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 what uh, you know these volunteers, uh, you know, and paid members of firefighters and police do every day to make our life what we have, uh, you know. So you know, these folks are here to protect and serve us, and uh, we we want to give back to them. Uh, in any way possible, I, in my personal opinion. So, like I say, BrokersRealty.com, BrokersRealtyPM.com, uh, and the Jesse Storm team are partnering up to to do this event and, and bring this forth for, you know, thanking our veterans and first responders. Um, you know, like I said, so we we uh, have over a thousand tickets to give out. So we want to make this happen for everyone. Awesome. Fantastic. All right. Hey, buddy, thanks. You have a great day. And we're going to be talking to Mr. Staz next, the uh, our favorite home inspector. Thanks, Jesse. You have thanks, a great Jesse. day, buddy. Thank you. That's that's amazing. A thousand tickets. Yeah, I got like, like 25% of the stadium he bought out. That's awesome. That's yep. awesome. Just for first responders, front line. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so, so, so the bar is set. The bar is definitely set. <laughs> yes, and, and and I'm sure we'll be able to give out all those tickets. Yeah. Well, what's nice is he's giving them out to, you know, he's giving them four so they can take yeah. their kids and stuff. Yeah, you know? which is awesome. It's not just one ticket and you got to pay to get somebody else in. You just bring out your whole family. Right. Yeah. yeah. What a cool thing to do. That's awesome. So we have uh, John Staz on the line, and... Um, I believe John's going to hold his cell phone up way up in the air, and I'm going to hone in on his location just by the sounds of the area. Good morning, guys. Good morning, morning, John. John. So, um, yeah, so I see a lot of kids running around, but that doesn't really give you any hints to my geography. Hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing some I way off soccer ball. Way off in the distance, I hear some waves. You're, you're in Jersey. How did you ever guess? At a soccer tournament. You got it, man. We were good. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, John? It's at this uh, beach soccer tournament here in Jersey, but I guess today we're going to talk about AC units and maintenance for the summer. Well, it's a good time for that, that's for sure. I, it's funny, I... That, that we're talking about this today because we were going through doing some cleaning in the house and there was one of those return vents that just had, you know, five inches of dust and or, uh, you know, cat hair built up on the top of it. So as I, you know, not kidding. P- pick this vent up, to, you know, take it out and spray off the vent and clean it off, you know, I look down into where this return vent goes and, you know, all of the ducting has basically this fuzz, you know, on its way to the AC unit. So, um, you know, aside from that, this is definitely a good topic. Yeah, especially in the summer, your returns are very important. Um, it's, uh, with your AC, the house can only be cooled as fast as the return air can get back to the unit. So it's critical that you have adequate returns. Your filters are, are clean. So one of the things we find a lot during home inspections is we'll turn on the AC and we'll find the second floor is a lot warmer than the first floor, you know, huge discrepancy. And we look into it a little closer. A lot of times it has to do with either inadequate returns or, uh, of course, in- inadequate insulation or ventilation for the attic can cause the second floor to heat up. And... Um, so, so, yeah, definitely your filters, returns. Um, you want to look outside at your compressor unit and make sure that the coil fins on the outside, you know, people cut their grass during the summer and some grass clippings can get on that. So you want to make sure that the coils, fins on the outside are clean so that um, they can breathe and get the proper amount of air that they need to function properly. Um, also cut shrubs and trees you want to have about a foot of clearance on your your outside coil here's a homeowner tip for everybody uh, so 
you know, during the summer, second floor, you find your second floor is getting real hot and um, try a little experiment. Try opening the, the door to the bedroom and see if that changes the, the temperature, if it gets cooler. And if it does, it means you're not getting enough return out of that room. And uh, sometimes what can be done is to put a little pass-through air vent above the door so that you don't always have, you can have your privacy, have that door closed, but the air can pass above the door to return back to the, the unit to be cooled. John, um, you know, I see a lot of those outside units when we're looking at properties, you know, and it seems like the, the, the dirt's washed away from underneath them and they're sitting at a slant. You know, I mean, they're, they're now pitched some. Is that something the homeowner should uh, get taken care of? Sure, yeah. Um, so when the, uh, the outdoor units, you know, sometimes you get some settlement or, um, you know, the pad gets washed out and the unit settles, so there's a motor in there, the fan's running, um, it needs to be within an inch of level approximately, or it can cause the, the fan unit to wear out quicker than it should. So it's a routine maintenance item. You want to make sure that you get that fan leveled if, if it's out of level. And, uh, you know, as home inspectors, we look to make sure that it's within like about an inch of level across the top of the unit. Now, on those outside units, can, can, I, can I just take my garden hose and hose them down? Like, you know, because it's got sure. those vents yeah, in sure. there. Sure, there are some parts you don't want to get wet, but as, as far as the coil fence, as far as I know, um, you can just spray the, spray the grass clippings or dirt off. You know, sometimes they do take, you know, there can be damage to the coil fence where they, they can be professionally serviced and they can do some, sometimes some maintenance on them to get them straightened out. But just your normal dirt, um, as long as it's not too deeply embedded, can be cleaned off with a garden hose. So on those outside units, it sounds like we want to make sure that we're not blocking any airflow anywhere around that, underneath it, around it. We sort of want to make sure that it's, it's, all the leaves are out from underneath it and it's, it's got good airflow, right? Yeah, yeah. You want to make sure you have about a foot of clearance around the unit and then um, <clears throat> the unit's fairly level, um, coil fins clean. Any tips for, like, window units, wall units, or now they've got those split units, you know, that, that are in the, the houses and walls I'm seeing, John? Sure. I have a, a great tip for window units being a landlord. Um, you know, people install these themselves, and they sometimes don't read the fine print on the instructions. You want to make sure most of the window units will have a tray, and they're made for the condensation to drain out the end of the unit. So they need to tilt away from the house so that they're on a slight angle so that condensation can drain. What can happen is if they're not installed on that angle, if they're level or tilting back towards the house, condensation will actually run into the the window's um, sill and then get into the wall and cause all kinds of damage and problems. So... That, that's a, a tip for install, installing those. And, and is, is that, you know, those wall unit ones, you know, that I see in some of the older homes, you know, like down there in Steelton we're talking about where they've got them, it looks like a window unit to me, but it's built in the wall. Same thing, John, we got to make sure they're tilted right, and do they have yeah, one of those trays yeah, in the, there too? Yeah, whether installed in a window or into a wall, most of them have a condensate drainage system that relies on the the unit sloping away from the, the structure. So these things should have water dripping out on the outside, am I correct? Yeah, that's normal. Yeah, that's the normal function of the unit, yes. So if it's not tilted right, is that what causes the unit to freeze over, or is that something completely different? That's something completely different. Um, the freeze over uh, can be a lot of times one of the more common causes of that is if it's low on coolant, um, if there's not enough of the refrigerant in the unit they can ice over there, there's a number of things that can cause that but that's one of the more common john i know you just mentioned refrigerant so i know like in the cars now there's like a new type of refrigerant so if i have an older maybe a 20 year old air conditioning unit that's still running is that something i should have changed yeah yeah um you can look at the at the data plate on the unit and it'll tell you the type of refrigerant that it takes. Now, some of the some of the units are 
they'll list both types. The new type, the R22, which is the older, which is real expensive now. The new is the 410A. So some of the units, um, there's a transitional period where they can run off both. Of the, they'll list both types of coolant. The newer ones almost universally run off the 410A, the newer, more environmentally friendly coolant. So, And they both do the same job, right? They both do the same job. Okay. So I'll get the cheaper stuff then. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. So, John, what's the best uh, way to get a hold of you, obviously, for not only home inspections? And I, I spoke to you the other day about uh, doing individual inspections, maybe not just a whole inspection, but like a structural inspection. Perhaps somebody wants you to come out and, and check their AC system to make sure it's running properly or set up correctly. What is the best number to get a hold of you? Yeah, the best number to get a hold of us is 717-233-6144. And you are online as well, correct? Online at evqharrisburg.com. And, and obviously the, uh, the Where's Waldo phone in Jersey, um, <laughs> <laughs> via the office, um, although it sounds like you're not going to be doing any inspections today. Not today. Good luck at the soccer tournament. Hey, thanks. Uh, yeah, we won our first game, so but we're really just here to have fun. But kids are having a great time. Yeah, it sounds like it in the background. It sounds like they're enjoying themselves. <laughs> That's awesome. Awesome. All right, John, have a great week, buddy. We'll talk to you next week. Okay, we'll talk to you then. Have a great week, guys. All right, see you later, John. That was interesting. I, I mean, yeah. I, you know. It's because, a good show. Yeah. I uh, mean. I, every week it is. Of well, of course it is. it is. But, I mean, today... It's funny. I mean, you know, we, I'm sitting here, and just the other day, I was, we were what at the office, and I was sitting there up a storm about tenant issues. I know, you know, I know. I got his phone number for you, <laughs> and uh, you know, so I'm like, all right, well, you know, it, it goes both ways. I mean, you know, we have a lot of responsibility as landlords to, you know, give properties in the in the right. Um, What's the word I'm looking for? I mean, we, we, it's our job to give safe properties in good working order. Um, you know, tenants are paying for it, and, you know, that that's where they're living. I mean, we they expect plumbing to work, heat to work, uh, secure doors, secure windows. Yeah, safe um, place for them and them for their family. Exactly. I mean, so so we have a number of responsibilities. Yep, we do. Um, you know, we're we're the ones that are called on the weekends and at nine o'clock at night for fires and all kinds of fun stuff. Um, <laughs> and property management is definitely an option. Yeah, I mean, really, you know, it's something to look into, even if you're managing your own properties. If you, even if you just have a few, because it may free you up. I wanted to move on. I wanted to. Um, we're trying to do a show on underwriters and questions for the underwriters. Yes. So any of our realtor friends out there or loan officer friends, we, we're looking for specific questions that you'd like to know how an underwriter looks at things. You know, for example, why would an underwriter call for two FHA appraisals? You know, what, what's the, the things that would set that off? Um, so if you guys can Facebook us or private message us or call us or email us, uh, we're trying to get that show together. Um, I see uh, our new auctioneer of record, Sarah Smith, is watching. We're going to have Sarah on for one show to talk about auctions because, uh, as you know, our firm's opening up brokers' auctions, and we're going to start doing real estate auctions, asset auctions. Our motto is we're going to be turning your assets into cash. It's a great motto. Yeah, assets into cash. Yeah. And, and auctions is actually a great viable option Absolutely. Um, you know, to selling. And uh, another future show, we're going to have Ryan Tamarchio on from Assist to Sell because a lot of people are asking, how do some of these discount or flat fee brokers work? And uh, Ryan owns a franchise in central Pennsylvania here. And we want, we, 
I know you have questions as to how he operates. And curious, yeah, it's pretty Very interesting curious. system. Pretty interesting system that they have. So we want to give some uh, competing views out there. And well, that's what uh, we're here for. I yeah. mean, it's it's all about options and what you're comfortable with. Um, you know, from selling, auctioning, investing. funding, investing, landlording. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and, and if you guys have a topic that you'd like us to dive into and, and possibly get a guest speaker or a professional on, please hit us up on Facebook, give us a call, uh, and just post a question on there. Say, Hey, you know, I've been really looking into, uh, maybe buying a, a rental property for my uh, son, daughter, or granddaughter to uh, go to college? Is it worth doing that versus paying the rent? Which is a very good question. Um, but yeah, even if it's something as obscure as that, hit us up. Um, you know, possibly we can put a show together and uh, get some good information out there for everybody. And don't forget, if you'd like some tickets to the Barnstormers game September 10th, you can Facebook us. You can private message us. You know, these are for first responders, and we're giving away four to each one that contacts us. And uh, Jesse has, uh, wow, I mean, uh, provided a 1,000 tickets for that game. So uh, we've got plenty right now, and we're looking for uh, people to uh, give them out to. Yeah, I think we have enough tickets to give away. So please, if you're a first responder, firefighter, police, uh, veteran, um, you know, give us a call, shoot us up on Facebook, uh, again, and, um, let us know that you'd like to, uh, you know, go to that event. Um, as always, um, John with, uh, brokersrealty.com and Kingsley with what's that company name? <laughs> it's PA go loan.com. I know that. I like that. Though. That's, G- that's just G- so easy to use. GSF mortgage. <laughs> Um, you know, hit us up online, get yourself pre-qualified right now. Still a great time to buy. Um, until next week, real people, real questions, real answers. See you guys. been listening to the real estate radio guy with real estate broker john rainville listen each week at this time and learn all about buying and selling mortgages market conditions property maintenance and much more it's brought to you by gsf mortgage corporation and by request inspections and search homes in pa.com it's the real estate radio guy saturday mornings at eight on oldies 102.9 and am 960 whyl it's all requests Join Joe Ricky and John Christopher Saturdays 9 to noon for the morning sunshine on WHYL. Joe Ricky plays good time oldies. WHYL. WHYL.
as dumb as I seem. 